Hey, welcome Family Church Online. Great to see you out there today. Hey, I just want to tell you what's going on here. That so many changes have happened day to day. It's actually kind of been hard to plan and prepare uh, hour by hour what we're going to do as far as church is concerned. So we've been working very hard throughout this week to prepare an online experience for you that would feed your spirit, that would inspire you, that would motivate you to keep going. All right, so wherever you are today, if you're still in bed watching us or uh, watching us on your TV or your phone or your laptop or your tablet, we welcome you here today. Uh, this week we have been feeding students throughout the entire Pine Bush area uh, each day. Students can go to the high school, the middle school, or come through our church parking lot to pick up meals. And uh, just on Thursday, we fed 1,800 people uh, in those three locations. What an amazing thing that God is doing uh, in and around us today. In our website app, uh, where we're at right now, we're also all in chat rooms with you. So if you need prayer of any kind, you can click the live prayer button. Uh, and it'll open up a chat room with someone on staff that can pray with you right now online. Okay? As you can see, we have this title screen up on the wall behind us called Made for This. And last week we spoke about uh, that we believe as a church that we were made for this moment. That we're not going to back down or lose momentum as a church or the kingdom of God. But we are going to move forward because we were made for this moment. All right? I've decided to postpone the series that we were in, put it on hold, because I really believe that God's leading us in a direction right now to preach on the topic of faith. The topic of faith. So this made for this series, our sermon, is made for this faith. Made for this faith. Faith that was made for this. Made for this moment, okay? Last week we learned that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. And I pray that you've been connected to a Bible-based church, if you're watching, uh, if you're a guest online with us today and you've not come to our church, I pray that you've been connected to a Bible-based church that has taught you that, that faith comes by hearing the Word of God, a good Bible-based message. You cannot receive faith unless you hear a message of faith. I do understand, however, that in times like this, it is very easy to lose your faith. It is very easy for your faith to come under attack like never before. And as we plan this message out for the weekend, I asked a question in the office. I said to our staff and our team, and this will come up on the screen beneath me here, how do you know you have faith until there's a need to exercise that faith? How do you know you have faith until there's a need to use the faith? And the answer to that question is, you don't. You don't know you have faith until there's a demand to use the faith. Woo-wee! All right, it might get me a little bit of trouble online. You don't really know, all right? So as we build this into our series on faith, let's define what faith is. Okay? I was raised in a faith-based Bible teaching Bible school. This was one of the main verses that we were taught. It's Hebrews 11.1. 1, and it says this. Now faith is. Okay? It's giving us a definition. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So right now in your chat room, or online, you should have seen that verse come up. Uh, you can copy and paste it. If you're in our um, sermon area, you can be taking notes and then email it to yourself, okay? So just show you how this is going to be working. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I'm going to ask you this question today. What's the substance of your faith? What's the substance of your faith? 
Now, if you're stumped, we need to define substance, okay? Substance. The word substance is the real physical matter of which a person or thing consists and which is a tangible, solid presence. What is the tangible, solid presence of your faith? What is the substance of your faith? Because the Bible says this, faith is the substance. Faith is the real, tangible thing that you're holding on to, okay? So what does your faith look like? What does the substance of your faith look like? How do you know you have it unless there's substantial proof that it exists? What does your faith look like? And I'm going to make this statement. It's going to come up on the screen. It's going to say this. Faith is only as meaningful as the substance it's attached to. Woo! Faith is only as meaningful as the substance it's attached to. If your faith is attached to the wrong thing, it's not godly faith. Huh? So let me ask you today, online family, what is your faith attached to? Some have faith for finances as long as they have a really good paying job. Some have faith for healing as long as they continue to feel healthy. Right? Because the faith is attached to the wrong thing. It's attached to the wrong evidence. It's attached to the wrong substance. We think we have faith, right? Isn't it so easy to have faith to pray for someone else's healing? But a lot of times we stay sick when we're sick and we've prayed for ourselves. Because a lot of times the faith is attached to the wrong substance. The only faith, listen to me right now. The only faith worth having is a faith that is attached to Jesus Christ and him crucified. A faith that is attached to the finished work of Jesus. That's what the faith has to be attached to. Your faith has to be attached to that God is good and that God loves me and that God wants the best for me and that God is for me, not against me and that God wants to prosper me and that God wants me healthy. That's what faith has to be attached to. So today I want to look at some faith problems. Some faith problems. We see that most people don't know the volume of their faith until there's a need to exercise that faith. If we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, then we have to have the correct, the correct substance if we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, then we have to put ourselves in a position to hear the word of God, right? So I want to read today a parable that Jesus shared with us in Luke chapter 8, and it says this. This is the meaning of the parable of the sower sows the word. The seed, Jesus says, is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Second group, those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy. Then when they hear it, when they hear it, I'm sorry, but they have no roots. They believe for a while, but in a time of testing or a time of trial or in a time of COVID-19, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked out by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Okay? First group of people that I want to talk about today are the ones who have had stolen faith. 
stolen faith. Okay? Stolen faith is the first type of person. And Jesus said, uh, the word of God, the seed is the word of God. Those who fall along the path are the ones who hear. But then the devil came and stole the faith. They stole the faith. Okay? There was an attempt to plant the seed. There was an attempt to plant the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How can they have faith unless they've heard, right? It came, but it was not received. The package was placed at the front door. All you had to do was open it and grab a hold of it, but it wasn't received. It was stolen. People can be in church. They can be around the church, but the church not be in them. Right? It is possible to hear great teachings and have great pastors. There's no shortage of access to great pastors online today. <laughs> Everybody's online today. Yet hearing alone does not mean you believed or understood. That's why he said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and receiving what you heard as truth. So it's not stolen from you. The second group of people is neglected faith. Neglected faith. This is what the Bible says. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who received the word with joy when they heard it, but they had no roots. They didn't do anything with it. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. Now let me ask you this question right now online. How many of you have a flashlight at your house? Now, when I ask you that question, I'm not talking about your smartphone, smarty pants. I'm saying old school, you got the big black, um, what's it called, mag light in your junk drawer in your kitchen that you haven't sorted in the last 10 years. Huh? You got a flashlight sitting in a closet somewhere, right? You got a flashlight. How confident are you? that if the power went out right now, that that flashlight would work. When's the last time you checked the batteries? Took one of those flashlights apart, and the batteries were all corroded inside. One of the batteries had popped, and there was like white, crusty stuff all inside the flashlight. I had the flashlight! I put it in the drawer! So it was available when I needed it in an emergency. But I neglected to ever look at it. I neglected to ever use it. So in a time of trial, when I went to go get it, when there was a time that there was a power outage and I needed some light, I went to go get it. And it was dead. 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 A lot of people in the church world today that you were raised in church, you had been in church, you had heard words of faith, but you haven't had to use your faith in so long that it's dead and crusted and neglected. And maybe even if you could power it on, it's very dim. Your faith is dimmed. It was there once, it was burning hot, but right now, it's not. Neglected faith. The third type of person that we see is the person who has misplaced faith. Misplaced faith. Watch this. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked out by life's worries, by life's riches, by life's pleasures, and they do not mature. Who has jumper cables for their car? Huh? You got some jumper cables? Yeah? Where are they? Mine are hanging in my garage. Hanging in my garage. What good does that do? having jumper cables hanging in my garage, right? They should be attached to my vehicle. They should be in the trunk of my car. 
so that wherever I am, I run into a situation that I need to use it, it's available. I've got my jumper cables in the wrong location, in the wrong spot. And a lot of us have our faith in the wrong spot. We have our faith attached to the wrong things. Like my jumper cables that are attached to my wall, they should be attached to my car. They should be attached. They should be in the truck of my car, in a compartment that I can get to them, that I could help somebody else out if their vehicle dies. I could lend a hand because I have access to those things. Do you have access to your faith today? Have you put your faith in a place that it's easily obtainable? That you can grab a hold of it in an emergency? That you can grab a hold of it in a situation? That you can grab a hold of it so that you can minister life and strength to somebody else? Or have you put your faith in things like it says here, life's worries, life's riches, life's pleasures? And this says here, the person who does that, they do not mature. They do not mature. This group of people that Jesus is speaking about had faith. It was just misplaced. They had faith in riches. They had faith in pleasure. They had faith in the success of life. And when crisis came... It halted their faith. It halted their faith. They fell away. So what's the remedy? What's the remedy to this stolen faith? What's the remedy to this misplaced faith? Our final group. Jesus said, but the seed, the word that came by hearing that fell on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Firstly, your heart needs to be right. Your heart needs to be right. What is your response to this current situation? What is your response to your neighbors who are in need? Did you go into self-preservation, or did you go into continuing to advance the kingdom? How can I be a good neighbor to those around me? What's your heart like? The substance of things hoped for needs to be Jesus Christ. That needs to be the good heart. Secondly, it says that faith comes by hearing the word of God and that that needs to be retained. It needs to be retained. You need to be listeners of the gospel and retaining it. The best way to retain it is to use it. James told us that. Don't be hearers only, but be doers. Because I know in my own life, the best way for me to learn something is hands-on. Let me do this thing. So then faith comes by hearing and doing. Let me retain the word that I heard. Like the batteries in the flashlight, your faith needs to be kept fresh. And you refresh it by using it. You refresh it by using it. And when you use your faith, it produces a crop. When you use your faith, it produces something in you. When you use your faith, the Bible says that God's word will never return void, but it will produce exactly what he set it forth to do. Amen? It produces the strength you need, the healing you need, the finances you need, and the peace that you need. Placing your faith in the correct substance. As we close today, I want to ask, how can we be praying for you right now? How can we be praying for you, for you to exercise your faith in the right way? I think all of us are in a moment right now in society where we're seeing what the substance of our faith is. 
we're seeing what's in our faith inventory right now. Are you in the first group that God was at the door knocking, he placed the word at your doorstep, but you've never answered? We want to pray with you today. If you've never had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life and step into the family of God, to be part of a spiritual community called the church, then we want to invite you to do that today. And here at Family Church, we make it very simple. We pray a prayer out loud to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And if you're sitting there today and there's already this void inside of you and there's a tugging on you right now, then this is, this is God calling to you. This is the knock on the door. This is the package waiting for you to receive with joy, with gladness, to begin this journey in Christianity. And the prayer goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, thank you for accepting me, loving me, and receiving me into your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.